Hey everybody, what's going on? Alan here. Welcome to the Gibson Garage Speed Shop YouTube channel. And uh, I want to say thank you so much for all your support, all the subscribers, and everything else. If you're uh, familiar with the channel, you know what we've been working on. We're trying to, what we're trying to do. If you're new to the channel, well let me tell you, what's important right now is the 10k 10k raffle giveaway so this week's going to focus on getting a plan of action together kind of list uh, order of importance on what we need to start working on as far as the the trikes mostly we're going to go over everything that i have over here uh it's to go with you know the trucks and the cars but uh and there are some things i really need to get finished still with some of those but I really want to focus on what we're going to be doing with the trike and the, the Baja and all those other little mini toys. We'll go over that too. What, uh, when this one needs to happen, hopefully is at the end of March, beginning of April. That's when I want to do this. And it's just, uh, I want everybody to come down to the clay pits in Orville and just bring their mini bikes or their quads or whatever. And I'm going to hand everybody a raffle ticket and we're going to raffle all my stuff off at the end of the day. And then, um, and, and we got to raise some money though. Obviously, here's the thing. Here's what I really need from you guys. I need your support. I need your donations. We got to try to get to 10K by the time this event's going to happen. We got to get to 10K. We, we need $10,000 and I need 10,000 subscribers. Kind of. The subs are coming. I feel that's coming already, so that's really cool. Um, that's gonna happen pretty fast. I'm already like 9,500. But uh, what really is gonna make this happen is your guys' donations, ladies and gentlemen. So please, I would help it, or <laughs> so please, I would appreciate it very much if you could hit that super thanks button down below. Donate some money to help make this happen. And of course, I will keep track of everything that we're going for. And if we don't get 10K, if we get, I don't know, Whatever we get, we'll, we'll just try to make it work. Right now, I've got $1,000 built up. That is pretty much already spoken for as far as, because it's all going to make this happen. I've got to buy tons of parts. There's a glass of barbecue. So I've got to buy tons of stuff already just to finish up these two projects. There's Old Blue in there in the shed. There's a quad in the shed. There's a, a mini ninja. I think that's it in the shed. There's like six items. So help me take care of those things so we can raffle off something nice and not just some broken down projects and then i'll make sure that everybody has a lot of fun and everybody gets a chance to to get them okay so here's what i've put together so far starting with the stuff on the shelf here I mean, starting in the back we've got that heat shield that's supposed to be for the pickup truck i want to first use what i got this is just about trying to empty the shelf and use the parts that i got i want to throw it not in the doors but like on the floorboards and behind the seat and firewall use it up where i can there because i plan on getting you know at least fiberglass doors one day and then you got the window tint there that's also saved for the back window of the truck. I am going to rip out those, that glass window and put in a one piece of plexiglass, also to save weight, but we'll throw tin on it so it looks cool. Then you got the steering and shifter kit. This is all kind of one big project here. So you got a heat shield, window tint, steering shifter. You got the Prius electric motor and column here. We got some pieces to make it work, the electrical box. The quickener here to make it work faster and we're still gonna have to order up like u joints and stuff to make that work this is the gear shifter because once i convert to that i won't have a shifter on the column i can use anymore so i've got to convert this to the floor i've got the cable there i got to order up a plate for a four speed because I think that's three speed. I don't know what it is, but I don't, I don't think it's right. So I got to order up a plate. Those are pretty cheap, like 35 bucks or something. Not a big deal. U joints, not a big deal. And then also on the pickup truck, uh, I want to go back to the stock face plate. The one I have in there now, aftermarket ones, they have this big protruding section so you can stick a full depth uh, CD player in there. But uh, I'm gonna take the one out of the Suburban that's only a half depth, it's just like a receiver, it's not a CD player. And I'm gonna put that in the pickup truck. You know, put these speakers in the doors somewhere. Maybe I'll find two more speakers it's just so I got four. Maybe I'll just go with two. Not sure at this point yet. But that'll help clear some of that off. 
we can get some of these parts off eventually. A lot of this is just extra parts. A lot of it is also for the engine build. Like this box, this is these are actually brand new valve covers, powder coated red. We've got some push rods down here and some bearings. Um, I think I've got enough parts here actually for two builds because there's a block there. Those headlights are kind of junk. I just kind of want to get rid of those. Maybe I'll bring those with me on the raffle and raffle those off too. We got these turbos here. I got two max peating rod turbos that I do want to make for the truck as well. Just some small guys, throw turbos and some NOS at this thing because yeah, and then that'll be fun, maybe. Moving on to the Chrysler. The silver Chrysler 300 needs a transmission filter change, and that's really it. There's nothing on the shelf here that goes to the Chrysler. Suburban, I'm not going to do anything to the Suburban in the immediate future. I just want to keep it running. The Magnum, there's some more shelf stuff. Now, these headers were bought for the Magnum, uh, but these ports are too wide. You can see here, like, it wasn't even touching on one side of all the port huge leak so the solution for that is to buy new cylinder heads so when i get the money to buy new cylinder heads and a camshaft kit then we can use those right that's the solution throttle body this is a 90 millimeter throttle body that will not work on the magnum in its current state uh, i need to wait i need to find somebody that will help me program a 90 millimeter throttle body in there and i know I don't want to hear the comments, I've already heard it all. You know, why don't you go lower, 90 doesn't work, it's too much, it's pointless, blah, blah, blah. Well, none of that matters anymore. I have it, it's here, it's going to go on the car one way or another. And it does actually fit, I got a truck intake, manifold. So I've got the full size giant opening, it doesn't choke down like the car manifolds to get under whatever it's trying to get under, because it's like a low profile manifold. No, I got the tall boy with a straight shot like all the way to the center of the manifold then it dumps straight down into like the runner cavity it's as wide open as it gets okay and then i've got the cane and intake tube which actually fits perfectly the grommet on the k n fits over that nicely you know the diameter inside and out is just going to be one smooth ginormous size all the way into the middle of the intake manifold and that's what i want that's what i got I just need someone to help me program it in. And that also is going to need a transmission filter change as well in the near future. Not nearly as bad as the Chrysler needs one. Now the engine build is something I've been wanting to do for a while, obviously. I've got a whole rotating assembly. I've got camshafts, I've got flywheels, balancers, I've bearings. I've got the whole nine yards here. I've got everything you need except for head studs to fit these guys. I have to order head studs. I got bolts, uh, head bolts, but not rocker studs. So this is an older 350 uh, with a mechanical pump, fuel pump provision, but it's bored out to 30 over and it's a stroker kit crank here. Look at that, cast, crank, small block Chevy. It's low power, right? Everything's cast, nothing's forged. I've got a dart in here. So this should give me my 383 with Trick flow fastest cast heads, smog legal also. So this will be the first version before, you know, we put turbos on it because it's still the stock throttle body. However, I did take this throttle body or this uh, manifold and have it bored out. So those are a little bit larger than normal, than stock. And in the throttle body, I have a throttle body too. It's actually on the Suburban because I tried putting that throttle body that I had modified on the 305 there in the pickup truck and it did not like it. It won't run, it won't run. It's way too rich. You gotta, it's gotta get really warmed up before it even thinks about running. So right now that throttle body is sitting on the Suburban and it, you know, 350 is handling it a little better than the 305 is. So that's, that's where it's at. The original throttle body to the Suburban had to be turned in for a core. Oh no, so that throttle body that's on the Suburban is actually the one from the truck. I had to turn it in to have them modify it. They decked it, bored it out, and added larger injectors and everything. But when it came back, it was too much. So I swapped throttle bodies just so the truck's drivable for now. And the Suburban does drive all right with it. Um, but, you know, it still dumps a lot of gas. 
So that's pretty much gonna do it for the shelf that I need to use and get rid of, right? The rest of the stuff's just like extra parts. Uh, lug nuts and thermostats and got exhaust tips. And that's the mini spool for the pickup, but since the $50 factory LSD that I found in a junkyard from Suburban is working great, that's what's in there. But now we need to move on to the mini toys out here. So for the trike, this blue guy here, Again, I'm just trying to get these up and running. I don't want to, you know, do a whole bunch of modifications. I just want to get them to where when you get them, you can play with them. So it needs front brakes. I got to finish the front brake bracket. I've got these forks on here from Go Power Sports, the hydraulic forks, right? But I need to make a bracket for the hydraulic caliper. So we got some good, decent brakes on here. And I got to figure out a lid for the gas tank. But this has a juggernaut on it. It's got a decent chain. It's got decent sprocket the rest of this stuff's kind of home built i think that's a 212 like harbor freight engine right with a go-kart live axle i made these pedals here they'll flip up it's pretty cool this thing's a lot of fun so that's what that needs to get that going and now on to the scooter it needs throttle and brake cables also. They've been sitting out here rotting. So we gotta get long enough throttle and brake cables figured out. And we need to probably buy a new seat. We gotta figure out a gas tank. This has no gas tank yet. Assuming this engine still runs, assuming both of these still run, because they've been sitting out here in the rain. Uh, that's all that one needs. And then paint both of them. I'll throw some paint on both of them to clean up the rust and uh, get them painted so it looks a little decent. A little more decent and that's it for those two all right so first and foremost is old blue i picked this guy up from a junkyard and a motor brand new motor in the box uh not a junkyard a yard sale for 200 bucks and i verified the motor works it's great it is brand new came in the box i don't know why i don't have the box anymore but it doesn't matter it's a brand new motor what this might need is just install the engine get the chain on I've got to figure out throttle and brake cables. I've got to figure out the brakes, which I'm not sure if I can make these rims use. I would love to use these rims because they're just cool. They're just really cool. I'd love to use these rims. Uh, but they've got like this built-in brake on this one. I'm not sure. And it's off center too. It's not centered in the middle of the bike. So I don't know what that's about. That's going to take some work to, to figure that out. I might just have to get new rims and tires so I can make that happen a little more easily. And then we gotta figure out a seat. I'm gonna completely make a seat from scratch or maybe order something, probably just order something actually. And then you've got the Baja, which I just, I think I'm just needs tires. These tires are really old, they got some flat spots, but the Baja, the Quad, and the Mini Ninja over there should all run, it shouldn't really need anything. So that's why there's really nothing written down here. <laughs> the Baja needs tires and maybe uh, an, an air filter because it doesn't have one. I mean, yeah, these three out of four in here, I think are ready to go, but we will have to go through them all and make sure, you know, of course. All right, so for this week, what I want to try to accomplish, what really needs to happen is that we build this, a die for this license plate box. I bought some heavy steel here. I'm going to cut out some shapes that'll let us press these edges in the way I want them to. Uh, and then make the box of course if the die works out i mean this is we got to try it out see if it works or i know i still have to order led lights to really make this work um but i don't think we're going to try to really install it this week just want to see if i can get the die made out of the metal and get these edges bent up first that's that's the main goal just just make the die and bend it then i got my mom's black chrysler 300 needs a blend door actuator if you're following along in the last video you heard that thing clicking away and then i really do need to get that transmission filter in the silver 300 that's really that really need to do that and then uh, if we got time we'll try to cut another uh, football sign out on the arc droid here for a friend of mine so look at all these on the floor did they fell out <laughs> yeah okay 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 All right, so I just uh, drew a square here on the arc droid. You hit trace and you pick the square and you can type in the dimensions. I put 12 and an eighth by 6th and an eighth. Gave it the old test 
route there and it seems to all be staying on the metal so let's give it a cut here well we gotta turn this stuff on all right well it cut pretty good cut pretty good got our eighth inch on both sides roughly this license plate is like it's a hair like literally a human hair smaller than regular one but it'll work well enough so i think now what's next is to go for the big the big one on the thick stuff okay i just got a little test circle here i'm gonna test to see if you know what the power's like for this thick 3 h stuff the speed i cut the speed in half down to 20 20 inches per minute, I think, is the rating. So let's see what happens. Alright, here we go again. I slowed it down. Okay, that's not working. That's not working. Wait, is it working? I'm starting to work! So this, I can't cut through this. It's not straight either. Well, no, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that is hot though. Look yeah, that's the, like a little heater. You can see the heat waves coming off of it. Huh, one hockey puck. Okay, well, poop. Okay, we're gonna try another practice cut here. Let's uh, see what happens. Well, that turned out pretty good. Pretty good. Slowing it down definitely helps. It's welded to this thing now. <laughs> We just gotta send it. We don't have any choice. If it don't work, we'll have to go find some thinner stuff. Oh, almost no ground wire. That'd have been crazy. So the splashing has really messed up my nozzle. I can't get a ground through it anymore. I chipped some of it off and brushed it off. Uh, I'm gonna back up the cut distance a little further away and see if we can keep going. All right, so I cleaned this up here with a file and the tip was actually a little loose, so I tightened it up and we're gonna give it another shot. Well, novel's ruined. It's got like a weird hole in it now, like a slit, more than a hole, so. And just the underside. It's not really got the power or something's wrong. Maybe I need to change the adjustment. And I went ahead and built this last night. Well, tray for this guy, and this is hanging up here now, so. No more hole in the wire. But uh, this does have some adjustments 4T and 2T. I'll have to look that up and find out what that means. 
but uh, it might just be too much. But it's weird because, you know, it looks like some parts it, it'll cut well enough. You know, the lines are looking straight enough, smooth enough. But then, I don't know, it just starts to give up. Then too much splashing, maybe I'm going too fast. I don't know. But uh, either way, the nozzle's ruined for now, and I don't feel like running out to try to get another one. I'm just gonna have to cut this by hand. This sucks, because all I have is the four and a half. Well, this is taking some work. No, it's not actually as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And I'm not going through the blades that much. That's the first blade, a used blade I started with, and this is the second blade. Another brand, this Avanti or whatever it is, from Home Depot. Don't get those. Hey, this is the one from Home Depot. These aren't uh, that good. They like to break and chatter a lot. Now the ones from Benchmark Abrasives though, that guy is eating, dude. Eaten. All right, so I got those two bricks cut out. Oh, jeez. All right, three-eighths plate. This uh, one was done halfway with the plasma cutter, so it's not perfect, but I did run it along the uh, grinder over there, and uh, I think it'll work. We'll just make that the top plate, really. But these other edges are looking pretty good. This plate is looking really good. I still need to run it on the grinder. Just really true it up, get those edges nice. Maybe I'll bevel the corners too a little bit. And then we'll drill some bolt holes, four bolt holes in it, and sandwich it in between the two plates here. And then we take that whole assembly and we press it into this. This will have to be raised up on some blocks slightly, but we'll press it through this and that will fold these around this top plate, hopefully. And, you know, if I had a thought further ahead, in fact, I, I knew I needed a hole to press it into. I just, when it came time to cutting, I got so caught up in like, not having to cut as much as possible because it was it sucks that I, I forgot that I needed a hole to press it into. But I welded on a piece here on the end. Hopefully we can make this work well enough uh, but for now mom showed up at the car and we're gonna put in blendor actuator now it should be the same part number for all the positions in here just like uh, aj's chrysler there i'm not exactly sure which one i need this is aj's chrysler's a generation older this is like 12 and 13 up and then this is you know 11 and down so 11 and down has a different part number than what i have here but i think we're gonna have to get in from the passenger side down here it's honestly i have no idea i gotta turn the car on and see where the noise is coming from again it's the blend door for the passenger side temperature blend not mode door these are modes these would be blend, temperature blend. So you can hear it changing from hot to cold, but it's like worn out so it can't read that it needs to stop trying to go to cold. And going back to hot, it does that. You can hear the change in the wind in there. It's just. It's just when it goes down to cold, it changes it to gold, it, but it doesn't have enough teeth to stop, like to give feedback that it's changed all the way. All right, so since the driver's side didn't do it and the passenger side did, we're gonna start over here. We're gonna remove these three things like this. And, yep. Disconnect the vanity light here or whatever light you wanna call that. And I think it just tucks in the back half of this. Okay, don't let the red plastic alarm you. 
it's just a normal clip. Now it sounds like it's coming more towards the center and not way out here on the end. So let's tell me what you guys see. Huh? What do you see? What do you see? Oh, look at that timing. Oh, you can see it. Thank the heavens. Look at that look. You look at you flickering away. I'm gonna see if I can gain a little bit of visual access by removing these four bolts here. I'm hoping it'll be that simple and this whole glove box will fall out like magic and everything will go my way. Let's see. Nope, no, of course not. There is no such thing as magic. Right? No such thing. Two more on the side and there's four up top, two here. Maybe this will let it fall. Let's see how many times I'm wrong today. That was easy. So that actually wasn't that bad. Uh, like I said, there was two on the side and then like four across the top, two on this side. This panel just pops out with their fingers. And then there's these other clips you saw me using the pry tool for. You just gotta pull it out of these clips here, these three. And actually it wasn't that bad. Probably don't even need to disconnect this. Yeah, it's we'll, we'll, yeah, oh, down here. But yeah, we do. So now we can see the motor. Look how easy that is to get to now. I can actually reach it. And I don't have a super cool ratchet that'll fit in there. So I'm gonna have to do it the long way with, with my hand ratchet. But it shouldn't take me longer than like an hour to get three bolts out. And then I'll get back to you. You little dirty. Why would you put a safety clip on something so deep? They're like, oh, let's be funny. It'll be fun. That works. Sure as hell ain't going back in, that's for damn sure. Now there are some differences here. The factory one is on the right. Duralass is on the left and it is considerably smaller. Well, I'm sure the bolt pattern's the same. We got two pins, way far apart. Two pins way far apart. Connectors look the same. So, let's go for it. I don't feel like these holes are lining up perfectly. There we go. So the bolt holes don't line up perfectly to get these nipples inside these bosses. But once you wiggle them into place, adjust this guy, you know, for the gear, it's, uh, it's in place and we can put these screws back in now. Tighten that one up by hand. Okay, so that bolt there is so close to the body that it's hard to get this Torx bit on there with this thick socket. If you can find a Torx that has is a longer shank just to clear that body, that would be ideal. 
Okay, right now the passenger side is set to low. Let's move it up to high. And it should move. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's move it back down to low. And make sure it doesn't click on the way down. Butter. So, plug this light back in. Ooh, we got a light. And we'll line up these tabs here. Three tabs that mostly hold it into place. Give it the old door panel punch. We'll put on all these bolts up here and the two on the side, two on these side. Punch this panel back on. I gotta kind of tuck it in the top first, give it a, then tuck the bottom in, line it all up. Looks like it is. Oh, one more piece. This guy, this is easy. Plug you back in. Hopefully I can find the wire I tucked. <laughs> oh, the joke's real. Oh, thank goodness. Now there's a ledge right up there. This is going to sit in first jamming Christmas well that's going to do it for this week guys I appreciate it so much thanks for tuning in thanks for subscribing please hit the like if you like the uh, tutorial on on the uh, door blender there whatever that is or if you like this or if you like anything at all you know go ahead don't forget to donate please hit that super thanks button down below we need to get this 10k 10k going right there that's got to happen i want it to happen so bad and uh peace <laughs>